Welcome to The Positivity Effect, where paying it forward and doing something positive in someone's life can provide them with the confidence and motivation to do the same for someone else. Like a stone dropped into a lake, let's create a ripple effect of positivity throughout our world. And it begins with your host, Dr. Thomas Retcher. Hey, what's going on, guys? Dr. Tom here, and you're listening to The Positivity Effect, episode number 112, The Warrior Sage Way of Life. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. Today is October 31st, and it is Halloween. Happy Halloween, guys. I had a blast this morning when I went to my gym class. I actually ended up wearing a full chicken suit costume. And this gym, it's like a class where you're there for an hour and you're being led by a teacher. And people said they were sweating just looking at me. It it was hot, uh, to say the least, but it was so much fun. And that's what we have to do. We have to have fun in life. We have to have be spontaneous. Uh, I definitely think that the chicken suit uh, made a couple of people's days there in the gym this morning. So glad I had the opportunity and I had the chicken suit to do it. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, today is episode 112, The Warrior Sage Way of Life. And to receive my insights from today's episode, just text the word POSITIVITY to the number 44222. Today I have on Satyan Raja, the founder and president of Warrior Sage, a living synthesis of Eastern wisdom and Western practicality, combining the power of the warrior and the wisdom of the sage. He's been training himself and others for 35 plus years. And he's here today to share some powerful insights into the warrior sage path. We talk about how we all can be a leader. We talk about the deeper callings that each and every one of us have in life. Having relationships with others and why that's the utmost importance. But most importantly, having a relationship with ourself. And we also talk about the difference between peak success, having peak success in life, and peak existence. We talk about so much more, but I don't want to give anything else away, and I just want to jump right into it. Guys, get yourself into a peak state and help me welcome now to the positivity effect, Satyan Raja. Satya, what's up? Welcome to the Positivity Effect. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. And let's, uh, make, it, let's make it fun, exciting, and hopeful for everyone, and useful right. for everyone that's listening. Right. That's right. Make some miracles. Make some. Make something special for some, for everybody. And uh, so I always love this because I get the video. Nobody else gets it. This is this is just my selfish <laughs> endeavor. I get all the video. But uh, so so where are we hanging? Are we hanging so out? Are we only doing? Although we see each other, are we only doing audio? We're only doing audio. Oh, okay. So you guys can't peep into the funny faces that I'm making right now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He's actually he's wearing a mask right now, and he's making a face. <laughs> I can't even. No, this is just an honor to have you on the show. Um, and and just what we're going to be talking about and how important it is. I mean, there's going to be a lot that we're going to be talking about today, guys, but one important thing I want to talk about is it's really important to raise your awareness level in life with who you connect with. And what I mean is that you never know when somebody will step into your life, when you have a conversation with somebody, whether you're at the grocery line and somebody's checking, checking out your groceries, you're at a, high energy business meeting, you're at a conference, you're at a wedding, wherever you are, you never know what that person is going to mean in your life. And the only reason right now that Satyan and I are sitting here on this podcast is that a mutual friend who is an incredible human being said, hey, I think the two of these guys would do really well having a conversation with each other. Let me connect them. And at the end of the day, that's life. That's all these amazing things that we do and 
enterprise and business and relationship. That's what it comes down to is connections and relationships. And I wanted, as we get into this pod, this, this you know show today, I'd love to talk about your relationship with your wife too. I love that you said you've been together 29 years and it's so inspiring to me as someone who just got married uh, a few wow. weeks, a few weeks ago. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So Sai, again, welcome. Thank you so much for coming on. And why don't you give us a little backstory? Tell us a little bit about, you know, who you are as, as a young man and how, you know, what drove you to, to this? Cause it's all those, right. All those lefts and rights and ups and downs. It's never a direct linear line that brings you to where you are today. You know, by nature, I really, really don't like talking about myself so much because, you know, the important thing is who's listening and how can I, and we serve them, but I understand the context to know a little bit. I'll give you a little snapshot. Um, you know, I was very like uber nerd, very into spirituality and not really p my feet planted. I didn't care about school and all of that as a kid. And then I saw Bruce Lee and David Carradine and Kung Fu and saw Kung Fu and I was totally like lit up and I felt that's home. And so I sought out a Kung Fu master in school and, a, and teaching and apprenticeship. And I dove into that for many, many years. It became my way of life and, um, you know, it was an art, a skill, and a way of life that I dove into, and it was profound. I was very blessed to have teachers who were far beyond the fighting aspect. I mean, they, they were kick-ass at kick-ass, but they were also outstanding. Um, they were like monks, you know? They were like men of nobility, of character, like out of, out of Camelot with chivalry. Yeah, like it's not something you would see on a regular basis no it was it, it, it I, I was really initiated into a very powerful um school and system of uh really good people to say it who had a bigger vision we weren't bound by religion we we all had our own different viewpoints and poli politics but what bound us was this love of making a difference and um that was the first thing that we were taught as apprentice instructors that we the instructors are helping people help themselves. And we, the instructors, care. So I'm so glad I had that deep imprint, you know, that role modeling when I was young, because I know not everyone has that. Um, but I had that, and then later on I got into natural healing methods and shiatsu, acupuncture, and then I just dove into, I, I became, I had a voracious appetite to what I can do to improve my own condition physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and then how to transfer that to others. So that's been my obsession for 35 years now. And I still feel fresh. I still feel there's unbelievable amounts to learn. And uh, I feel like I'm out of the gates at 35, you know? <laughs> I love it. 35 years meaning into it, like doing it hardcore, you know? That's awesome. That's awesome. They say, and I, I, I full heartedly believe, believe it, it, one of the I guess I said I just said they who's they right but a lot of success coaches or or gurus and or people of influence they they will tell us that it's so important to to get to the point in your life where you are of the giving nature you're you're no longer focused on the inward but you're 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 now growing and you're and you're also giving as well but then somebody listening might say but but why do I want to go out and and help others when I can't help myself yet. I can't even help myself, but I, I, yeah. I, good point. yeah. And I, got a good point. I challenge that thought though, is that it may seem selfish to help ourselves, but one of the, the most amazing things that we do by helping ourselves is that we do help others. We influence others. And I love that you, you shared a little bit about how you, you, really built yourself up spiritually and all of the teachings and, and the learning, but you're, now you're, you know, you, you, you do help others. And it's, I think it's so important to recognize that it's okay to, to build yourself up because by building yourself exactly. up, right? Exactly. Well, you know, my philosophy in this warrior sage philosophy that I came into was that we are all students Ever. I'm a student, you're a student, everyone listening is a student. Every day of our life till the last breath, we're a student. And simultaneously, we're also a teacher. No matter what age we are, whatever, who we are, what we are in status of life, 
If we're influencing our children, our siblings, our friends, our family, colleagues at work, we're teaching through our demonstration. And we're learning through our receptivity. Problem is, is that what I find is, is that our receptivity tends to get limited after a while. We think we know it all. That's the ego state and or self-important state. Or then or we go to the other extreme of, oh, low is me. I know nothing. And then we diminish ourselves. You know, in, in the warrior sage path, we aim to stay in the center. We become like a Jedi, like right in the center. You, that. you know, just like that. You know, you remain in the center. You, and then, you know, we, you, you talked about do we do it ourselves? Do we take care of ourselves and others? Again, in this sort of warrior sage path that I came into, there's three stages. There's a stage of the self, me. So if you think of concentric circles, me is in the center. And you got to take care of the self. It's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You start with the self. You get strong. You develop into you know um, good functioning, good flow, good art with what you got through life, and you know you play the best cards you have. That you take care of yourself, right? You get strong. But then that's only going to be satisfying to a certain point. There'll be a point if you do that well enough that you're going to want to open up, and that's the second stage where it's now win-win. You're not just self-centered or me-centered alone or selfish in its in the extreme form um you're thinking win-win how can i be a, a a better service so you get more involved in charities and service and volunteering making a difference doing it silently doing it uh, in in, in um, uh, sometimes an official manner working or being part of organization so many ways to have this win-win and that really uplifts the heart it expands our heart it gives us a higher meaning Something it expands us to be better, and because um, there's more to uh, more to life than gaining, and if you haven't got that yet, this word I just said is not going to help at all. <laughs> you you got to hit that space, you know. But then there's one more stage, and that's the third stage. So me, we, and then the altruistic biggest vision is what the greatest humans on earth have touched, and that's stage three of this warrior sage path, which is for the sake of all beings. Man, that's all beings. You look at the Mahatma Gandhis. You look at mm. the Martin Luther Kings. You look at so who you know. You look at a guy like Elon Musk, a modern kick-ass entrepreneur. But all what he's doing is changing it for the sake of all beings on the planet. Slowly, his innovations, his his determination, and what he's pulling, bringing forth. So I think we have all three within us: me, we, and for the sake of the big picture. And I think. Wisdom would have it that if we activate all three, we become much more powerful than if we just operate out of one battery rather than the whole powerhouse of uh, breadth and depth and potential we have. Where, where does one start if, if they're, they're just trying to activate the, the level one, the me? Where, where do they start if they are they're lost, you know, and, and they're listening, saying, I, I, I would, I want to get to that point where I'm, it's, it's a win-win situation, but I'm, I'm not even winning right now. And, yeah, it does, I, and I don't, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even saying financially, maybe somebody's thinking, they're listening, they're thinking, is, he saying, is he saying financial, but yeah. So in this path of the warrior sage, the focus is, is that we have equilibrium, equilibrium. And one of my mentors, Kevin Nations taught me his four F's, which is faith which is the belief in self, belief in your place in the world, belief in the forces of the cosmos being on your side. That's faith. There's family, which is obviously our own personal family and then the greater world, you know, family and relationships. Finance, making sure we're healthy and balanced. Not how big we are. It's not how much millions we have. It's the equilibrium, the peace that we have with it. And then there's fitness, you know, our health, our vitality, to live out our day, to live out our loves, our laughs, to experience what we wish to experience in life, right? If we're sluggish and this, then there's no joy in it. So equilibrium is to take a look at, you know, if you take a look at those as threads, pieces of a law of a thick rope that intermingle, intertwine, they have to all be strong. I like to look at, for me, strength is in my equilibrium. So I take a look at what's weak in those areas. You know, where's my weakest dip? 
Where's the where's the breaking point? And the breaking point could be, you know, I'm doing well in business here, but you know what? I'm not spending time with my lady or my kids. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I did that. I went off track years back. You know, I made millions in one of my businesses and I was on a high and a, and a high horse. You don't know it until you're off it <laughs> from looking back. At it. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know until you fall off, right? <laughs> And, you know, I almost lost my family because I was I was being a rock star in the world and I, I was being a dud in my own backyard. Mm. So that's not equilibrium. How many wealthy people, millionaire promises go forget that? With your experience, when when your work, is that something that comes up a lot when you're working with executives, when you're working with leaders who are leading and they're in such high yeah. pressure positions? The number one thing, it's something to do with sex and relationship. All successful people I know, high-end folks, uh, successful entrepreneurs and um, um, movers and shakers, influencers that I work with, because we've got this energy to make a difference and to grow these things, sometimes our own backyard is what suffers most. And that could be family relationships, passion in the relationships, you know, fizzling or dead or 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 about to die, or it's good, but it's not, it's not going better. You know what I mean? It's plateaued in a certain way. Right. Or it could be in the, it could be in the finances where it's just like stress and struggle and putting out fires all the time. So, you know, I, 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 it all boils down to sex, power, and money, man. Those are the three kinks of every leader that we got to shore up or we're going to self-destruct. Look at the world. The world is self-destructing by leaders who are acting out their shadow side around sex, power, and money. And oh, if we clean that up in ourselves as leaders, then the power doesn't go away. It gets stronger. It gets more powerful. And bring ourselves into alignment with truth and who we really are, what we're really passionate about. L lead with what's what you must do in order to die complete without regrets. Lead with that. Mm. And I think all of us can be leaders. We don't have to be running a Fortune 500 company to lead other people. We can be leading at home. We can be leading in our communities. We can be leading just by the way when we do our when we're checking out our groceries at the at the checkout line. It's it's everybody has that innate offering in life. Uh, one of the greatest things we can do is we can is is lead others and influence others. Exactly. You know, the other warrior sage paradox, you know, is that we're all leaders. Me, you, everyone listening. We're all leaders, like you just said, right? Whatever position we're in. And we're all followers. That's interesting. Yeah. That and the fact that we are all followers, we can we can go out and say that again, going back to the fact that we just pointed out that we are all leaders. But someone may feel, but but what do I have to give? What what gifts do I have that's going to make somebody else's life better? And I talk about this a lot on the podcast that just the fact that you are alive, everything is constantly in motion. And once you step outside your door, everything you're doing right now is is influencing. It's when somebody passes you, when you have a conversation, the way that you respond when maybe somebody cuts you off in traffic, you, you're always influencing people and. I think when we really raise our awareness to that, at least in my opinion, something special starts to happen because it's just, I, f I feel it's like a higher consciousness, a higher calling that, that exactly that, that to connect with humans that way. That's what makes I us like human. Start, I, I like to start off the day or after I walk out the door or maybe come on here on the podcast with you and say, what, you know, what can, I ask myself this empowering question, what can I do today to influence in a positive way. I just have the intention of making influence in a positive way. And I don't even have to know the details, but it's having that, stoking that fire that you'd like to do that, even starting off there. Um, like to, you'll find, everyone finds their own signature way of doing it. Like every, Like you said, I believe that everyone is a miracle maker. Um, I believe each one of us, if you're listening to this, then you're drawn to this because the topic matter, this is your education of your soul. <laughs> you're coming here to tap, to fill up your gas tank of spirit. So to fill up that 
gas tank, what's your engine? If you're coming, if you're absorbing from coming to this podcast and listening and absorbing these great teachings and wisdoms and interviews, then and inspirations, then obviously you have a mission and a purpose and an intention. Mm, I love that. So even if you don't know what the clarity of that, if you know, even if you don't have the clarity of that. You are a built-in mission fulfilling device straight from the cosmos central. <laughs> and, you know, and if you don't know what it is, start opening to it. Start making a declaration. I'm going to start following my impulses, my joys. I'm going to look for if I get an intuition, hey, maybe I'll go volunteer here, there, or go hang out and try this hobby. You don't know who you're going to meet, where and how. That's going to lead you to getting more and more precise with your mission and, and your nothing purpose. and nothing good, nothing good that that is going to make an impact on us, like on our hearts, on on our our feelings of wow, I, I just did something great. Is going to be easy, and if for example you just mentioned like maybe go out and and do some volunteer work, or or maybe 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 you, maybe you need to go on that next job interview. Or maybe you had to have that hard conversation with a family member, with a loved one that you've been sitting on for years and been brushing under the rug and and it's just been stewing on it. But nah, let me just, I think we could just work around it without even having that conversation. Because these things are great and that they need to be done and they're so important, it's you're going to have fear and you're going to, what's going to well up and you're going to get all anxious and I don't want to do this. I, every time, guys, when I do these interview calls, even the day of the interview, I'm, I get nervous. I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta he's, I'm four o'clock. It's coming. I gotta do my interview, uh, and, I, and then, and, and it's, it's, it's going to those things that are difficult. When and once you, once you go into that, that dark, that unknown, like you say, you want to go, maybe you want to do some volunteer work, and your first thought is, man, I don't have a all the excuses they come up. I don't have time for this. I don't. I'm not good enough to do that. That's just your mind quitting. It's yourself. Your body is quitting before you should quit. And you know what I look at? Look at those. I write those down as teachers. Mm. I want to do this. I want to do that. The teachers are, and then and then you write. I can't because I won't be able to because. And on the top of the paper, I write my teachers. Oh. And then like like my kung fu masters. They're like mental. Emo they're like mental, emotional, spiritual kung fu masters inside of my heart, in my mind. And what they're doing is they're 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 standing right there next to all the whys not. And they and, and that's yeah. their lesson for you. That's their lesson. It's not something that you push away from. It's a doorway that you go up to, and it's a lesson that's not a mental lesson. You can't figure it out before you go in. It's like Bruce Lee said, you can't swim on Learn how to swim on dry land. <laughs> yeah. Right? You have to. So you got to go into it. You, you got to go in. into that. And that's where breathing and deciding and making those small incremental steps and moving one step forward like a warrior every single day. There's no stepping back. Not one day. Steady. It's not like you're trying to – some people, they see these things and like, oh, okay, I want to get 100 steps done in two days. One step, man. One step. I just started watching this uh, new uh, Marvel series on Netflix called uh, Luke Cage, and uh, one of the the main character he has this conversation uh, with somebody that's very profound in his life. He's actually this guy that runs a barber shop, and there's a scene where they they connect with him, and and he says, "Forward, always, forward, always, guys." We one step one step at a time uh if you want to achieve something in life i mean let's talk about relationships if you want to have a great relationship are you putting in that that effort 100 percent of the day but but realizing that it's one step at a time one step and and Sadia, i'd love i i think you know it's 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 just so inspiring for me that that you that you've been married for 29 years and and that you're the way that you guys connect now and, and that you help others through these, these spiritual journeys to reconnect with each other. What were some of the steps that you had to take when you were at that moment where you said, man, I was, I was on top of the world. I was, I was on, I was on that high horse and I, I had to step down. What were some of those transitions, those steps 
that you start to take to to really reshell and rebuild mm-hmm. rebuild that, yeah, that foundation I got it well you know I was doing well in my life like I was sharing you know in in one of my uh, businesses and I was out on the road lots and um, you know I w- it, it was just not not at home much and so I almost died. I got into a drowning uh, accident at one time in Hawaii. And when I came out of that, I just survived. And it was like, literally, it was a miracle. And when I got out of it, I, I, be, I got hit with a deep sobriety in my being. And <clears throat> what I realized was I started feeling into what my values are, what I really value. And I valued my family relationship deeper than I valued the success I was having in the external world. I was getting validation from others, you know, and all of that. So it was feeding that younger part of me that didn't get the validation that I wanted when I was younger. So I was getting this huge validation from others in public and doing this and that, you know, which is great. But the, the deep root reason was not, was, was not illuminated until after that. And then I realized, you know what, I want to bring that back home. So my wife and I, we we realized, both of us, that we need to put our passion first, to ignite our passion first, that everything else could wait. Everything else could wait. And because if we got a strong relationship and we put ourselves first and the passion between the heart connection, the intellectual connection and the passion, the sexual heat, that, that hotness for each other, and we put that first, and guess what? Our kids have benefited from it. They're teens now. They're they're young adults, and they've learned from what we what we demonstrate, right? Not what we say. And, That's so true, right? And so, since we've put our passion first, paradoxically, my business has just gotten like everything has gotten simpler, easier, because you know the happy wife is the happy life type idea. <laughs> so true. The uh... How many words is that? Uh, the happy wife. It's it's just like one of the most powerful phrases. But <laughs> it's so true that you're when you shore up things at home, that everything seems to flow out of that, and yeah. it's true. And uh, and then you have real peace, real peace. Yeah. Not the peace that comes with the fluctuations of income. Yeah. Or it's pretty powerful to know that you have that rock solid relationship. In a, in a maybe even in a difficult moment time of maybe 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 work is burning down around you or but then you know at at the bottom of it all that you're going to come out of it because because with work and things things always come back and bounce back but you know in your heart that your relationship or the things that you're showing up at home are tight and when those things are tight that yeah you have that rock to stand on but also you may not be in a relationship right now, guys, if, if that's where you are in your life. So it may not necessarily be a relationship with somebody else. But what's that relationship with yourself? I mean, I think about it all the time. I, the conversation that I have with myself on a regular basis. I mean, I, I hear guys, I just share with you. I, when I woke up and I knew I had this interview today, I, I was, there was chatter in my mind saying... You know, you're not good enough or you're, you know, relax or you're not, you're not going to be able to do this interview today. We all have those moments. We have that, that, that conversation in our head. Are you, what are the things that you're telling to yourself? What are the things that you're whispering to yourself at night? Or when, or what are you whispering to yourself when, when nobody else is watching and nobody else is looking? It's, it's something that you sh- we should all definitely raise our awareness to. And it could be difficult at times. But you're here. You're listening to this podcast, and that's a great step. And and we're all here to lift each other up. And and I think that's just one of the biggest points that we were, were driving home on today's today's call is that that sense of self, that sense of who you are, of of your why. And you can build a great relationship, especially with other people, when you build that found you know outstanding relationship with yourself. You know. And I could hear that, Sonia, in, in your voice and, you know, and just in your peace, that, that you've built that peace into your life. 
And uh, guys, what I think I think that w- what else is that? You know, that's for me. That's one of the most important things is is that peace. Yeah. When you could put your head down at night with peace. Uh, one of the, one of my favorite uh, authors, John Wooden, the great John Wooden. He was a basketball coach at UCLA. Yes. He said, "Make each day your masterpiece." Yeah, that's right. What a beautiful a beautiful way to think of life. If that we make every single day our masterpiece, but it's hard to do that if we're not taking care of ourselves. If we're not taking care of our relationships with the people that matter the most. So I'm glad that we. Yeah, we talked. We you know we touched on that. You know, my dad was uh, one of my gurus around this. He had, my family they had a, a restaurant business growing up, and uh, I saw how he would treat his customers with impeccability. Little slightest thing off, he'd grab brand new plate, make a new whole plate ordered, and not even charge for anything. Not even for for the whole dinner. Like he was, if there was anything off, the whole dinner was like that's awesome. Like, you know, it had to be perfect. It, and he had this loyalty, right? And and at the end of with this, and you know, in the restaurant business, crazy business, up and down, and all types of stresses, and and at the end of the night, he would always just like go deeply into sleep. And I go, Dad, how can this and that, the stress? How can you get sleep? He goes, Nothing is that important enough, son. He goes, Have you ate? I go, Yeah. I go, You got a roof over your head? Yeah. You got some. You, you, you okay? You're not injured or sick or something? Okay, good. Then nothing is important. The nothing, there's nothing, anything you think is important, lower the importance on it. The stresses, the struggles, I saw, and I've seen this in some of the greatest, though not, not just successful people, because, you know, I've attained and I've achieved peak performance, if you will, peak success. But that's not the same as peak existence. It's only a little piece that can have a lot of shadows and un- unconscious wackiness if you just go for ultimate success, you know, because um, I've seen it, you know, with all the folks I coach. But peak existence to me is like you said, brother, is having that peace that comes when things that used to be important to you that caused you struggle are no longer as important to you. And you rest them, you let them fall away and fall through. And then there's this beautiful inner equilibrium that starts to bubble and merge and mature. And that equilibrium that has a presence that's felt in a room. Doesn't matter what you look like, your haircut, you what designer clothing or not clothing you're wearing. If you have this lowering of importance and this impeccability of character and willingness to live your mission daily, it's felt in the space. Women find that sexy. Presence, claim, penetration, execution in the world. The very thing that men find trustable with other men, the masculine finds trustable with other masculine people or masculine energy, this presence, the, the, the willingness to be there undistracted, that claim, the desire to feel what is my joy, what is my mission, what is my, what even one small thing to do to raise, and I go for it, that claim, I shall, I will, I am doing that. I love you. Well, hey, honey, how you doing? It's I love you. There's a claim of your love, claim of your, I'm beside you. Mm. It becomes more than just this tepid, hi, hello, nice, we'll see you later after work. Blah, blah. It becomes I love you, honey. Look, I, I can't wait till I see you after work. Claim the penetration, letting her know your work know. Letting it's like entering life, like you're already inside it. You're not like a teenage boy trying to get in the pants. You're already in her. You're calm. You're collected. You're sexing her. You're loving her. You're courting her. Romancing her um, from already being inside of her. That's mentally, so powerful. Emotionally, spiritually, right? And and every yeah, and everything else flows from that. That's. That's so beautiful, man. So I call true. it the, I call it flexing the PCP muscle. <laughs> Presence, claim, and penetration. Powerful. That's powerful. Man, this has been absolutely awesome, Sonia. And I actually this last those last couple of minutes there was a little like tear coming to my eye because it's just uh 
everything you say, I, I believe. And it's, it's, uh, guys, when we live this way, you will have such a peace in your life when you recognize these things. And, you know, I encourage you to go back and to listen to some of the things that Satya said, because it's a lot of the world is not saying these things. They're saying other things. A lot of, you know, the worldly view is, is very different. And um, you will have much success and happiness and fulfillment in life when you really get down to some of these core things and you look at your values and, and you analyze and, and raise your awareness to are you living your life? You know, how are you living your life? You know, are, are you living your life the way society tells you to live your life? Or are you connected with yourself? Are you connected with the people around you? Are you connected with your community? Um, we all want to do great things. And uh, it doesn't have to be a grand scale. It could be as small as uh, smiling, some, smiling at somebody during the day. Or yeah. as big as Elon Musk putting people on Mars. Yeah. It's powerful. It's you know, there's a book called The Course in Miracles that says there's no order to miracles, meaning every miracle is of the same value. And a miracle is an act of love. It is. It is. That's so true. Salyan, I want to ask you, we're coming to the end. I want to ask you one last question. I always like to ask this. It's like a time capsule. If you were suddenly at the end of your life and you were reflecting on everything you've been through and done, created, what kind of impact would you want to be remembered for? I mean, I am at the end of my life. <laughs> <laughs> you look you look young, young to me. Dude, man, you know, my uncle died just a couple of days ago, unexpectedly in a matter of weeks, right? He got cancer and unexpectedly a few weeks later, he's made his transition just a couple of days ago. Wow. So I'm thinking why I'm saying this is because I think all of us are at the end of our life. And if we stop thinking about the end of our life, deferring it later, and we like the end of our life is here, then there's some catching up to do with there's some if there's any catching up to do, anything undone, then we better get on that first. So mm. I'm saying this to myself as my own remedy. So I want to be remember. I don't want to be remembered for anything. I want to be forgotten. I want lives to change, and I don't want to be remembered for shit all. I just want people to have such a powerful um, interaction with me that their life booms in a particular way. They go on, and at the end of the day, I'm forgotten. Like like every other great will be at the end of a hundred, a thousand years. No one will remember anyone. So I'm happy not to be remembered now, but uh, to to make the change. You know. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. I love it. Sayan, thank you so much for your time. This has been awesome. Like I said, I, I love these things. I love having the opportunity to do this. It's just, it's absolutely incredible in this day and age that we have this opportunity to do this and to connect this way and to spread this message this way because it's, there's, there's no one telling us how to spread our message. It's, we get to put it out there and we get to, to share it with the world and make a positive impact on the world. And it's a beautiful thing. So thank you, brother, for your time. Man, thank you. Thank I you. really dig you. I really, I really love your vibe and who you're up and what you're up to. And everyone listening on here, if you want to hang out with me and see what I'm up to, you can go to Warrior Sage, WarriorSage.com. I've got a private, I've got a community there, and we've got really cool events that we do online, like experiential events. So if you're interested in any of that, just pop on over there. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. And guys, hope you enjoyed this. Definitely go back and listen. This was this was an awesome, awesome episode. Sally, thank you, brother, and take care. We'll talk soon. Awesome.